What's up, Blueberries? This is Alton Hilt coming back at you with another episode of Surviving Dust. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about something that I mentioned in the first episode, and that is that dust is different. Now, I know you might be saying to yourself, why are we talking about this? Well, I've found that it's really important to be able to understand where dust differs from other first-person shooters because you're likely an experienced first-person shooter. You spent years playing FPS games. You've developed unconscious strategies, tactics, and muscle memories. You've likely switched shooters several times, and after a little practice, you've been able to perform as well as you did in your last FPS game. It's because you've developed a set of first-person skills, game instincts, and you've likely come to view yourself as an experienced shooter because of it. However, in Dust, many of the playstyles, tactics, and strategies that you've developed are going to work against you. But why? Well, in order to understand that question, we have to have a quick history lesson. But don't fall asleep yet, this is going to be the funnest history lesson you've ever had. So in early FPS games like Doom, Quake, and Unreal, everyone played the same character, had access to the same weapons, the same power-ups. The weapons were different, but they were generally easy to balance against each other. The player with the best understanding of the battle arena and the best twitch skills usually won. This skill was evident when a player had more kills than the deaths, a ratio that has become a formalized metric of player skill in FPS games, and it's really almost synonymous with the genre. Well, these shooters all shared a common design theme, player skill triumphs. But all this changed in 1998. A game called Star Siege Tribes dared to try something different. Tribes featured a class system with light, medium, and heavy armor types. And this allowed players to start customizing the way they played the game. It gave them different weapon loadouts, restricted the amount of weapons players could have based on frame size, and locked out certain weapons to only be available to certain frame sizes. It was a huge departure from the traditional FPS mechanic, but it was well received. Players loved the variety and the complexity that this class-based system introduced. But there was only one teeny tiny problem, balance. Multiple classes introduced an additional complexity into the base system. Each class had to be unique, but it also needed to be balanced so that no one class or frame or armor type could overpower any other. Well, today's military first-person shooter is a complicated extension of this system first seen in tribes. With multiple classes, vehicles, equipments, perks, abilities, and weapons, it's a hugely complicated system that requires balance. To date, I don't think anyone has gotten balance perfect in an FPS, but they try. Because even with all the variation within the genre, They've all inherited that original paradigm established by those early FPS games. That's player skill triumphs. So it's very likely that every other FPS game you've ever played has been built upon this paradigm. Nothing except player skill and probably a little luck influences who wins. Now in reality, we know things like lag, hardware cheats, and game imbalances, exploits, they all can influence who wins, but the core of the game design philosophy in first-person shooters has always been a level playing field where that player skill triumphs. Well, Dust is different. And at the very core of Dust's gameplay is the idea that not all mercenaries are created equal. So in Dust, player skill is not the only factor affecting who wins the fight. Your character's skill points, the equipment that you have, they all play a very significant role in determining who wins a firefight. This is a huge departure from the traditional FPS mechanic, and practically, it means that you're not going to be able to go head-to-head -head with every other player on the battlefield, but your FPS experience tells you that you should. So in short, your set of FPS skills is based on a completely different paradigm from the one operating in Dust 514, and practically, this means that your FPS skills are going to get you into a little bit of trouble. But it's not a lost cause. You just need to refine and alter your FPS mindset. 
Once you understand that your FPS experience is getting in the way of your success, you're on the road to improvement. And the good news is that you don't need to throw out all your other FPS skills. They just need to be modified and generally for the better. Because of the inequality, Dust challenges you to play more strategically. Now, strategy is how you approach the battlefield. It's the bigger picture. Tactics are what you do in the firefight, but strategy is what you do to shape the fight to your advantage. So how can you play more strategically? Well, the very first lesson that I had to learn was that not every player can be beaten head to head. Sometimes it's going to require a different strategy. The good news is everyone can be beaten in the right set of conditions. So the most important thing on the battlefield of Dust 514 is never get tunnel vision. You need to continually evaluate what's going on around you and try to force the enemy to play in conditions that favor you. And if conditions aren't favorable, well, retreat, hide with pride, seek out a more favorable set of circumstances. Now, circumstances are really fluid, but you can't take advantage of them while you're waiting to respond. So in a firefight, if you have to give up a kill in order to survive, do it. It's usually better to stay in the fight. Now, a really hard lesson for me to learn was that if at first I didn't succeed, I needed to try something new. Something about my gamer pride said that it, I couldn't just back down out of a fight if I had lost. I needed to respawn right in there and beat that opponent right back into the ground. But the truth is, in Dust, the enemy likely has control of the situation. And you need to try something different in order to alter the battlefield in your favor. So what are some of the things that you can do? Well, work with a squad. One well-coordinated squad is usually enough to turn the tide of battle for the entire team. Shoot, move, and communicate, as we say in the army. Another important lesson was to flank, flank, flank. Getting the first shot off is the difference between winning and losing a firefight most of the time. So constantly be seeking for ways to approach your enemy in and from locations that they're not expecting. Now another thing with Dust is that specialization is king. Find a role, a suit, and a weapon that you like and stick with it. Your strategy is likely and largely determined by the weapon and suit you're using. And it's pretty darn hard to switch roles and also successfully switch the strategies that each suit and weapon combination is going to need to succeed. Over time, you'll be able to expand into different suits, weapons, and roles, and that will greatly increase your versatility on the battlefield. But at first, stick with something until you get really accustomed to it. Finally, strategy is queen. Or in other words, character skill and equipment can't beat player skill and strategy. Now, a highly skilled player using a character with high skill points fitted out with the best gear really is something to be feared, but it's really the player's skill. I regularly go into the negative uh, kill-death ratio using my high skill character with prototype equipment. Well, just as often, I can pick up my really low skill point character using basic gear and go in the positive KD and, and do so in a significant way. The difference is the strategy that I am forced to use when I'm using basic gear. I can't compensate for lack of good strategy and good player skill with equipment. So I hope you've learned something. I hope it really shapes the way that you look at the battlefield from here on out. So until next time, I will see you in the sandbox.